pleasure to come to Bilston to worship with you. Amen. Amen. And I must say thanks to the elders for giving the, the pastor the invitation, asking me to come. Even though, as an elder of a Central, you know, you always have to try to see that things is going according to plan. Being the leader there, you know, you have to see that things is going according to God's way. Mm -hmm. And I have to take this time out to come and also share some time with the and brethren. And may God bless us as we go through today's service. Mm -hmm. As we, we just sung, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go straight to him in the light of his glory and grace. As we were studying this morning in Sabbath school lesson, we know that we have been going through a struggle in this world today. The flesh is warring against the spirit. But when you turn your eyes upon Jesus, he will help us to go through. And it's only Jesus who can help us. Don't turn your eyes on the prime minister of this country or the president of America. Or the, 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 you might have your nice Jaguar out there. Turning your eyes. <laughs> you turn, turning your eyes upon your car. No, you have to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Now, let me first ask you to wave, raise your hands in the air with your Bibles. Let's see the Bibles. Raise your hands in the air. Right. You have raised your hands. Um, so if I ask, what's that in your hand? You're going to say, it's my Bible. Yeah? Okay, are your sword? You're going to say, that's your sword in your hand. But in this book, there, there are a lot of gems in this book. A lot of gems to be found. And we are missing out because we are not reading them enough. We are not reading this enough to get all these gems in here. In this, there is healing. When you read God's word, there's healing. Amen. All you have to do, cry out like that man that cry out when he heard that Jesus was passing by. In Luke chapter, in Luke chapter 18, verse 38, when he cries out, when he heard, Jesus thou said that David, have mercy on me. And Jesus went and healed that man. You see, there's healing in the, in the word of God. Amen. So we have to read it and we will gain the benefit that is in it. These gems, beautiful gems that is in this room. Right, so this morning, shall we bow our heads as we pray. Loving Father, we come before you once more, standing in the need of prayer. We pray, dear Lord, that you will touch our hearts as we worship you today. As I open your words, Lord, I pray that you will give us receptive hearts so that your words can germinate and set us free because we trust in you. Bless us now, we pray, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask the question, what, what is that in thine hand? You say it's my Bible. But let's go down to Egypt for a moment. Is that all right? Yes. Go down to Egypt for a moment. God sent Moses down to Egypt to carry out a task or to do some, something for him. Moses needed to some assurance from the Lord. God said to Moses, go down, but Moses needed some assurance. You know that someone asks you to do something sometimes, you want to know, why is he asking me? Why shall I do it? You need some assurance. So God said to Moses, if you, that is in Exodus chapter four, I will start from verse two. God said to Moses, go down. Moses needed assurance, but he said, the power is not in, the power is in God's word, not in what Moses said and or did, right? God said to Moses, what is that in your hand? Moses said, a rod. <coughs> God said, cast it down, and then Moses cast it down. The rod became a serpent, but Moses, it is Moses' rod that he's been using for a while. He cast it to the ground, 
it became a serpent. But when Moses saw the serpent, what did Moses do? He fled from it. God told him to, to cast it down. And Moses saw the serpent. Is he afraid of snake? Why is he running? God said, cast it down, it became a serpent. God was showing Moses, I'm with you, and this is what I can do. Not in the rod, not in what you are saying. The power is in what God says, okay? Moses fled from the serpent. When you think about it, there are many people in the Bible that fled away from doing God's will. Elijah ran when Jezebel was after him. After he has just you know, performed a great work for the Lord, he ran when he heard those few words. Jonah went his own way when God said, go on to Nineveh. Samson did his own thing. Peter denied the Lord. And Judas betrayed his Lord. So therefore, what have you done? And what, why are you running away from what God asked you to do? What is in thine hand? You know, sometimes when, as children, we were going, going up back in Jamaica, quite a few of us here, I know, grew up in the Caribbean. And when we were growing up, and if we were doing something, and the, our parents just waved something in their hand. What is it? A straw? A switch? A belt or something? We just have to keep, you know, keep quiet. And those beating that some of us got when we were growing up, it set us on the right part today. Amen. And that's why many of us are now still are following the Lord because our parents has, you know, led us in the right way with a little smack sometimes. Okay. So therefore, we have to follow what the Lord is saying to us. The belt, the switch, or whatever it is. Yes, for some people, those beating has put us in the right place today. Yes, talking about dad's hand, one of the biggest and most powerful story that I read in the Bible is found in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to, to 14. God said to Abraham, Abraham, in verse 2, take Isaac, thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a burnt offering. Take thy only son and offer him as a burnt offering. Abraham obeyed the Lord, and God rewarded him for his obedience. In, in verse 5, hear what he said to the young man. Hear what Abraham said to the young man in verse 5. Abide in here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So to utter those words or that statement, you have to be in tune with the Lord. Remember, if God said to Abraham, after your son, Abraham said, yes, Lord, I'm going to obey. And Abraham is going out to do the offering. But Abraham said to, the, to the, his servants, the young men that were there, stay here with us, and I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again unto thee. Mm -hmm. If he's going to go and offer his son, why he say we will come again? Mm -hmm. Because he's going there to offer. That means his Abraham alone should come back. Mm -hmm. But he said, I and the Lord will go and worship and come again unto you. But when I think about it, I said, look at this. God said to Abraham, Abraham is obeying the Lord. But then he's saying to the young man, we will come again. There's something in, in, in the midst here. Because Abraham believed in the Lord that God will, as he's saying to his son, God will provide. God will provide himself a sacrifice here. But when, when, when I look at it, it's a three days journey that they are traveling. So the pace has to be set according to Abraham because he was now over 100 years old. How fast can they walk and how far can they walk in one day? You have the young men with us. So they have to walk according to Abraham's way. Abraham is a bus, of course, he's a bus. But then, 
you know, as a man over 100 years old, the other guys have to walk according to his pace. Mm -hmm. And they have to walk so far. Go to Moriah, Mount Moriah, and offer your son. Was Abraham, did he know that place before? Did Abraham, is he an astrologer, know his geography? Or does he able to read map or his compass? Grid now, magnetic now? Or, you know, as in part time, they were saying that the, the sun, when a certain time of the day, your shadow mm -hmm. is pointing, like midday, your shadow will be pointing maybe behind you when you stand up somewhere. So your shadow, you know with what direction to go because of the shadow. And they have something that you put your finger in your mouth and you put it up and where the wind is blowing, you know it's blowing from north. So did Abraham know all these things mm -hmm. to follow the direction to go? Because when he reached certain distance, he said to the guys, the young men, stay here and, and the lad will go maybe another day's journey to worship and come back. So therefore Abraham was trusting the Lord. And as they are traveling, the, the son said, Dad, we have the wood, we have the fire, but where is the offering? Abraham replied, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. That is a trust to have in the Lord. God will provide, he says. Now Abraham reached the place, Mount Moriah. And as they were there, now the lad is now bound. As a young man sees that tying up, you talk more that you resist. And then put him on, but he, he was obedient to his dad. And he was now tied up and laid on the, the altar to be offered as sacrifice. But in that moment, as I asked the question, what is that in thy hand? Abraham had the knife in his hand to offer to, to offer his son now, to kill his son, take the life of his son. But as he was about to perform the act, God, as he's been saying, will provide. He looked around and he heard the sound. God has provided the burnt offering for him, the sacrifice. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. We have to trust in him. Amen. Because whatever trouble you are in, just call upon him and he will be there for you. Amen. Abraham, as an old man, as you said, his step must, get, must be getting slower. But not because he's old now, I'm looking at the point where Abraham, going closer and closer to that place of, of, of offering, he's saying to himself, Lord, I'm obeying you. Lord, I'm obeying you. But my step is getting slower now. I want to spend a little more time with my son. That is just my imagination. He's going to do it, he's obeying the Lord, but he wants to spend a little more time with his son before he offered his son. But well, only he went and he did the act and God provided the offering. Yeah. So let's continue trusting the Lord and he will provide for us. Yeah. The question is this morning, what can God, what has God told you to do? What is that in thine hand? If it is something that the Lord can use, he will use it for his glory and you will be benefited from it also. So if it is something that God can use, and he's gonna use it for his glory, there's a benefit coming on your side. When God is working something out, he always looks after his people, amen? amen. <coughs> so my friend, God, has, God just wants us to be available for him. Are you available? Just give him a chance. If we go to 1 Samuel chapter 26, 1 Samuel 26, we saw here where the enemy is after his prey. The enemy is after his prey here in 1 Samuel 26. You know when people love to put their mouth in other people's business? <laughs> when people love to carry news. <coughs> now in verse, in verse one says, the, the Zippite came to Saul and said, Do not David hide himself in the wilderness of 
Achila. So Saul was there. This man went to Saul. David is running away from Saul. This man now went to Saul to say, isn't David hiding in that wilderness? Saul didn't ask him to carry news, but he went to tell Saul this thing. So Saul now gathered some of his best men, 3,000 of his best soldiers, to go down to search for David. And as David was here hiding, it says, in the previous chapter, you can see that David has done nothing to Saul for Saul to be chasing him. What has David done? Nothing, but Saul now was jealous of him and wanted to kill him. So David had to flee. And as he was there hiding in the wilderness, Saul came and they were in a certain part of the wilderness. But verse 6 says, David got him a volunteer to visit the enemy's camp. David said to his, his men, who would like to go with me down to, to the camp? To Saul's camp. And one of the young men said, yes, I'll go with you. So when they went down there, and verse 8 says, and Abishai said to David, God has delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Let me smite him. Let me smite him. You know, sometimes as, as Christians, we have our enemies. We have enemies, people who don't want us to prosper. People don't want us to, to do well. People always want bad of us. They are our enemies, really. And when God has blessed us, and there's maybe something happened to the person who wants bad of us, we said, serve your right. <laughs> you know, because of, you know, what to do. But David said, no, don't smite him. He said, let me smite him just once, and I want not to smite him a second time. David says, that's how, no, don't do that. He said, that's how some of us as Christians are. When we get the upper hand, we want to squeeze the life of our, of our enemies, because we are not having the, the upper hand. God has delivered you into my hand. I can do whatever I want. You know, sometimes some of us act that way. But when the Holy Spirit is with you, you will say as David did in verse 9. Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointing and the guiltless? I know that today, many of us take this statement very lightly. Right? And in verse 9 and verse 11, very, who shall stretch forth his hand against the Lord? And I tell you, the Lord, the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord. And I. David is saying that. The enemy is now in his, arm, in his hand. And David said, no, I cannot do that. Because what? When David went into the camp, he said, the Lord caused a deep <coughs> sleep to fall upon Saul's camp. They were all sleeping that David could walk through and take up Saul's spear. He could have killed him yes. and killed everybody. But David said, no, who shall stretch forth his hand? And the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointing. We, we will want to act according to the Lord's way and don't let nobody take our joy. Just serve the Lord and do what, what he will. So do you remember the story of the prophet now? The prophet and the king. <clears throat> the prophet and the king in, in 1 Kings chapter 13. The 1 Kings chapter 13 with this prophet and this king here. In this story, the prophet was only pointing out the wrongdoing. He went to where the, the king wanted to offer sacrifice. That is King Jeroboam. He stood by the altar to burn incense, and the prophet cried against the altar. And so King Jeroboam was angry, he was in enraged when he heard what the prophet had said. And so in verse 4, he put forth his hand from the altar to say to the, to the men, lay hold on the prophet, lay hold on the man of God. And what happened? His hand dried up. 
He pointed his hand to say, lay hold on him, don't let him get away. And his hand dried up, could not come back in. So he would be now walking around with his hand like that, dried up hand. But in that moment, he said to the prophet, call upon the face of the Lord and pray for me that my hand may return unto me. You, you can just imagine, he wanted to lay hold on the prophet, maybe to kill him or to beat him or do him something. And when it, that happened to him, he saying to the same man that he wanted to hurt, pray for me that my hand will re return. And so the prophet prayed for him, and the very same moment his hand returned unto him. How many of us would do that? Someone wants to hurt you and then call upon you to pray for him, and you say, okay, let's pray for him and let the Lord heal him. Many of us would be glad that that happened to him, but not so. This prophet <coughs> prayed for the king and his son restored unto him. But as this story continues, this prophet was on his way. The Lord said, eat nothing in that place, or when you're going back, don't go back the same way. Go the other way. So as he was going on his way, another a man, this old prophet was at home and his sons went home and told him did you know what happened out there the man of God came and he said something and the, the king's hand was withered and he said where, where has he gone you know which way he turned and they said yes he went said he went that way and he said suddenly my ass and as he they saw this as he went jumping and rolled off down the road and he met this old prophet he met the prophet of the man of God sitting down having a rest. And he said to him, Yes, I understand. I heard what happened today. But you know, come home with me. Come home with me and eat bread and you know and, and, and rest for a while. The man of God said, God said to me, Don't eat anything in this place and don't go back. When I when I read it, I said to myself, He doesn't have to explain all these things to this man. He said, I'm a prophet myself. And God said, you should come home with me. But if God told him one thing, yes. why would God told, give somebody else another message to come and give him? Yes. God is communicating straight to him. Yes. Why? And he believed the man and went home with, with the man. Yes. And as he went home, he ate and he drank. Yes. And then he set out on his, on his journey. And as many of us know the story quite well, when he was going out, he met a lion, and the lion just catch him and kill him. Mm. God told him one thing, and he disobeyed. Mm. So this morning I'm saying to us, God when God speaks to you, listen to God's voice and obey. Amen. He said, obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. And to ask and then the part of wrong. So when God speaks to you, just obey the Lord and follow what he's saying to you. Amen. This man lost his life because he disobeyed. The Lord. The old prophet lied to him and he believed a lie and instead of obeying what God said. May God have mercy upon our hearts this morning. <coughs> if we look in on Judges chapter 15, Judges chapter 15, 14 to 17 here. We go in, this is Samson we are talking about now. Samson was bound with new ropes. It says new ropes he was bound with. And he was brought to the Philistine. He, I think he, well, he allowed these guys to bound him. He said, bond, don't kill me. Don't kill me, he said. They said, we won't kill you. So they bound him and they brought him to the Philistines. And the Philistines now saw, okay, we have our man. But as Samson was there, he just flexed his muscles and burst those new ropes. And when he looked around, he saw the jawbone, the new jawbone of an ass. And Samson took that jawbone and he started to wheel. And as he wheeled and wheeled and wheeled, and when Samson stopped wheeling, a thousand men lie dead at his feet. A thousand men. Because Samson wanted to, to carry out his task as well. That's why he allowed them to bound him to take him to the Philistine. Samson did that and to carry out that task. I believe Samson 
as he will because the power of God came upon him. Mm -hmm. He could not have done it in his own strength. Mm -hmm. The power of God, when he was younger, he said that he was struggling and a lion came out to him and he said the power of God came upon him mightily and he would manage to kill that lion. And he said this time when he was bound, the power of God came upon him mightily and he was able to burst a cord and kill so many men. When God wants to use you, his power is there. It's for us to avail ourselves that he can use us. Okay, or just avail ourselves so God can use us. In, in the Bible that I asked you to hold high earlier, it says, there is peace. There is peace. A peace that the world cannot give. We read it in this book here. Just in case you forgot, there is grace that will suffice you in time of need. In this book, there is healing, a balm that will heal your sin sick soul. And Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it divide, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that is, and Jesus is the light of the world, the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So Jesus, my friend this morning, is the light of the world. So, you see, we don't have to be scared when a storm blows. We don't have to be scared when the flood came. <coughs> and we don't have to be scared when the earthquake shakes. And we don't have to be scared when the fire rage. Jesus said, I will be with you even unto the end of the world. Amen? I read this story somewhere. A little boy, he was traveling down the road with his brother, and his brother was in a wheelchair. His brother was in a wheelchair, and as he was small, and as he was traveling down, the wheelchair turned over, and his brother fell out. And because he was small, he could not lift he put his brother back into the wheelchair. And he was trying to stop, you know, flag down cars for help and asking for help, and nobody would. So what he did, he took a brick in his hand. He said, what's that in your hand, a brick? He took a brick in his hand, and this car was passing, and he threw the brick, and break the man's window. And the man come to a sudden break, and came out. Why did you do that? And he, with sobbing and tears in his eyes, he said, my brother fell out of his wheelchair. Nobody would help me. Nobody would help me to put him back in the chair, so I had to do that in order to get some help. Mm -hmm. And the man was sorry for what happened to his car, but he helped his little boy and put the brother back in, in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And the boy said, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. And the man helped him and went in his car and on his way. Mm -hmm. Jesus, our Savior, will always be there to give a helping hand. Yeah. Yeah. He said, he is only a prayer away. So pray and pray and pray some more. And it doesn't bother Jesus if you bother him at all. It doesn't bother Jesus. Because the, the man, it is the man whose daughter was ill at home. And he said, go to Jesus. And when he, when he was going to Jesus, someone told him that, Oh, don't bother the master. He said to them, someone, don't bother the master. My daughter is dead now. Mm -hmm. But don't bother the master. Jesus doesn't bother if you bother him. That's why he said, pray without season. Call upon me. Call upon me and I will hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Come to Jesus and he will be there for us. Mm -hmm. This morning, I'm just encouraging us. That will be in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that he may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus is saying, Come, come boldly to the throne. If there ever was a time, it is now. No time to play church, for time is winding up. 
there's a countdown. Jesus said, when you see all these things happening, know that it is coming. It's even at the door. We have heard of so many storms happening around, and these storms are coming is it bigger and bigger, more severe than the one before. Because one that happened, is it last week, it says that it, it is a magnitude of what? Five. Right? It's one of the biggest one they've had so, so in such a long time. So they are coming, and Jesus said, when you see this thing, the flood, the earthquake, and all the famine is happening, look up, because your redemption is right there. Jesus is coming soon. <clears throat> the question is, will you be ready to meet him? Jesus is even at the door. Will you be ready to meet him? I want to be there. And I want to meet all of you when Jesus comes. So my friend, this morning, get your house in order and be prepared that when Jesus comes, we can go home to meet him. God bless you. Amen. Amen.